Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord this morning. Let us give God honor, glory, and praise. Put your hands together for an awesome God, for a great God, for a big God, for a mighty God. Oh, my God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The, the scripture says angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. We serve you, God. We love you this morning. Let us honor him. Lift up holy hands to God our holy one. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God.
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on right there. Come on right there. We don't have to stop. We don't have to stop right there. Angels bow before him. So if the angels bow before him, I think we can put our hands together. I think we can put our hands together and just tell him thank you. Come on, Zion. Come on. Come on. Amen. 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 Good morning, Zion. Good morning. Good morning. We come this morning to worship our King. Amen. We come to give him back a portion of that which he's given us. And the best we can give him is our worship. Amen. So we greet you this morning on behalf of the angel of this house. Come on, give it up for Pastor Deval Hodge. Come on. And our first lady is in the house this morning. Come on, give it up for our first lady. Amen. Amen. And I greet you all this morning on this precious day in the name that's given that's above all names, that at his name, even that demons tremble. So we, I greet you personally this morning in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our morning invocation by no other than our very own deacon, Amen. Deacon Leroy Davis. Come on, put your hands together as we receive Deacon Davis. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Allow me to stand one more time in your presence. Thank you for last night's slumber and sleep. Did you watch it? Sacrifice of life. We may have life. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we come again, again, and say thank you, Lord. But you wake us up this morning, clothed in our right mind. Oh, Lord, we had, oh, Father, this on our mind. This church, oh, Father, come out one more time to praise your holy name. Father, we thank you, God, because you've been so merciful. We are so grateful. Oh, God, we could have been cut off down through the night, but Lord, we thank you. Oh, you watch. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you woke us up this morning, closed in our right mind. Start us on our way. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one that made their way out here today. Lord, we thank you, God, as we come, oh, Father. We had a word to preach about our pastor, Hodge. Oh, God, let us sit in our tent day of doors, oh, Father, and grasp the word, oh, Father, see, bring it to us, oh, Lord. Lord, look down upon us, oh, God. Oh, Lord, we travel through the dangerous highways in time to time, oh, Lord. Look down upon my sister, oh, Lord, that they go back to South Carolina, oh, Lord, on the train, oh, Father, thank you, Father, taking them to and forth, Lord. Oh, God, shall the mercy always granted, oh, Father. Lord, look down upon the children, oh, God, as they go forth, oh, Lord, the camp, oh, Lord, the do the dangerous highways, Father. We go out, oh Lord, we don't know, Lord, we don't know, but you, oh God, peace be still, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Look down upon us, oh Lord. Look down upon the caretakers, oh Lord, care workers, oh Father, still, oh Lord. These people, oh Father, just don't get it, oh Lord. This so disobedient, oh Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Just heed them, oh Father. Oh, God, bring him out, oh, Lord, and know that this is not your way. This is real, oh, Father. Oh, God, some of the things happen down through the world. Oh, Father, we just still just turn the devil here. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. It's kind of to keep us, oh, Father. Oh, God, day by day, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We can't thank you and praise your name enough because you've been so merciful, Father. Oh, God, we're still standing about Been here going on. But, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, look down upon those politicians, oh, Father, that snatch prayer out of school. Oh, God, I don't know, Father. 
but Lord, we know we need children need prayer. Oh God, if you didn't get it at home, oh God, they'll snatch it up in school. Oh Lord, in the portion of service, oh Father. Oh God, so much thing is going wrong since they snatched it out, oh God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, have mercy, Father. Have mercy. As we go forth, Lord, let's continue to keep us, oh God, in thy sight, Lord. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And every, every uplifted heart, every bow head, say amen and amen. morning. Good morning again. Reading from Deuteronomy 31, chapter 31, starting at verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him, in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage, for you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and ye shall cause them to inherit it in the Lord. He is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. I was reading from the New King James Version. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is time to give our big God some praise. Our great God, our good God, our mighty God. We just said, what a mighty God we serve. Would you praise the Lord with me this morning? Our God is greater. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no
you God. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is so good to be here in the presence of the Lord today. On behalf of our pastor and our beautiful first lady, I would like to greet all of our guests this morning. We're happy to have you in the sanctuary and all the ones that are on Zoom this morning. We're happy to have you on Zoom this morning. So please feel free to come back and join us and we love you and we thank you for coming. Amen. All right, come on, let's give God some praise in the house. Praise the Lord. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yeah come on everybody would you help me I'll say yes Lord yes to your will and to your will oh I'll say yes Lord yes I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes. Lord, yes. Come on, everybody. I'll say yes. 
just look at someone and say, I say yes to him right now. Yes, yes, yes. Now, come on, would you all just put your hands together and give God a great big praise in the house of our God on today. Hallelujah. Praise our God. God bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. I tell you that yes, Lord, has just been ringing in my spirit all week long. Sister Shiretta sang that song on last Sunday, saying yes to the Lord, and I just can't get away from it. Um, it's been in my spirit all week, and sometimes when you say yes to God, sometimes you don't know exactly what you're saying yes to. Sometimes you don't know where God is taking you, and you don't know how God is going to lead you. Some have to go through great waters. 
Some have to go through great floods. Some have to go through fire. But no matter which way he leads, wherever he leads you, he going to be right there with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So I thank God on today for the yes, Lord, in my spirit. And sometimes when you're on the journey, sometimes discouragement sets in. Sometimes the problems and pains of the world sets in on you. But even then is when you have to reiterate to yourself and to everybody and everything around you that you gave God a yes. How many say yes to the Lord today? Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I say yes to him. God bless you. Amen. It's a pleasure and it's an honor to be in the house of God again. Amen. On this beautiful Lord's Day, the first Sunday of August. Amen. Thank God for another month. Amen. God has brought us to. We are vastly approaching. Amen. The end of the year. Um, as we continue to go day by day and take it one day at a time, um, as you do so, uh, time continues to progress. Amen. And before you know it, we are in another year. Amen. The days are moving faster than we can even think about them. Amen. But thank God, God has blessed us, I believe, with a great portion of health and strength, activity of our limbs, Amen. And we are glad to be alive. Is there anybody glad to just be alive? Amen. Glad to be alive. Amen. Uh, we know I sent a message out on yesterday to give our congregation an update um, as to what is now transpiring with this uh, coronavirus pandemic. Um, now the Delta variant is, um, there's an upsurge um, in cases around the country. And uh, the word is that this Delta variant is more contagious um, than the actual uh, COVID-19 itself. Um, and so we know it's just a variant of COVID-19 and there are other variants that have surfaced in the last few months, but this Delta variant is doing some damage here and it is um, affecting people who are even vaccinated. Um, but the persons who are vaccinated have a higher measure of protection uh, than those who are not vaccinated. And so there's a whole lot of theories out here today, a whole lot of stuff going on. But one thing is for sure, and I don't think anybody can forget that the virus is here. <laughs> and so uh, no, no matter what, where you think it came from, how it happened, where it originated from, all of that is really, it doesn't matter uh, because it's here. We have to deal with it. Um, and believe it or not, God knew it was going to come before it came. Hello, someone. God knew that it was going to come. He knew that it was going to hit this world. And, um, but I believe that God's purpose is being done in and through it. Uh, because I still believe the Bible. Um, and the Bible tells me that God works everything for good to those who love him. And I believe that there are some people in this country, in this world that love God. And because we love God, we believe God is going to work it out for good. Amen for all of us. And so the message that I relayed to our congregation is the CDC has now um, put forth uh, revised recommendations that um, for indoor gatherings that we go back to wearing masks during our in-person gatherings and that is not relegated only to houses and communities of faith um, that is anywhere you go uh, to my knowledge and you are indoor with other persons to wear your mask but above all we want to encourage those who are not vaccinated to highly consider getting vaccinated. Um, go and get vaccinated so that you can have that greater measure of protection. It is a personal decision. It's a choice and I'm not here to force or make anybody do anything they do not want to do. But as your pastor, I certainly want to encourage you to do what is 
healthy. Amen? Do what is safe. And also for your neighbor, do what is right for your neighbor. Um, if you're going to be in places where people are gathered, you're going to work and we're going to the store, we want to be safe. Amen? Amen. On this week, I got word that our uh, brother Nashon is uh, all set to graduate. Amen. Later on this month. Amen. God bless him. We have some graduates all around Miracle Temple and prayerfully next year, I'm going to be in the number. <laughs> Amen. Finish this doctorate degree off and I'll be happy, happy. Amen. Don't y'all be surprised if I run around this church on that. <laughs> Amen. It's been a long journey. Amen. And so I'll be in the number on next year, but God bless you, Brother Nashon, and congratulations to you. We're so proud of the accomplishment that you have made. Amen. He'll have a virtual graduation on the 21st of this month. Amen. And so uh, if there's any way possible, we want to support um, him in that. Also, our dear Minister Mullins, I spoke with him earlier this week, and um, he had a successful surgery earlier this week. And so he is doing well and uh, prayerfully he's recovering well and getting well needed rest. And so let's be in prayer for him. Um, also, I know on last week we had family here um, and my dear grandmother was unable to make it, but she'll be here in the next couple of weeks. Amen. Amen. She'll be staying with us for a little while and we're going to spend some time together. Um, and that's well needed. And so she'll be here with us um, in, the, in the coming weeks. And we'll keep you abreast on that. Um, also, um, our ushers, I'm going to ask if they would prepare themselves. We have uh, some special envelopes that we want to uh, distribute to all of our members in preparation for our church anniversary and uh, Founders Day that will take place October 24th. Um, at 11.30 a.m. We want to come together as a church and make this day special for our church. And we want to celebrate our glorious past. And we want to go forward with momentum and with excitement and trust in God for what he's going to do in our future. How many know God has a great future for Miracle Temple? Amen. Amen. I pray that you believe that and that you have it in your heart and your spirit and that you are trusting in God along with me that God is going to take our ministry and our church to higher heights, deeper depths, and we're going to soar into our future. Amen. With the Holy Spirit's power. And so we're going to have our Founders Day and um, on the envelope as you receive them, you will uh, see uh, the um, what we are asking for each member to do um, and if um, you feel so led by the Lord to do a little more than that um, we certainly appreciate it First Lady and I we're going to do more amen to be a blessing to our church amen and we'll share much more later on and so also I want to put this out there on that day we're planning to have a photographer here um, in our service with us. Uh, the colors for that day is going to be purple and gold. Purple and gold. So we're going to ask everybody to get your purple and gold. And I'm going to ask our ministry leaders, if you're the president of an auxiliary or a ministry, um, get, get, get your good stuff going. Get ready so we can get pictures. Um, we want to uh, really have a nice website and have pictures of our church and our members on our church website. And so this is one of the things that we want to do um, in order to make that happen. Amen. So that we can have a nice impression out. Amen. In the community. Is that all right? Amen. God bless you. Well, it's time for the ministry of giving. Amen. Don't y'all be too sad now. Don't y'all be too sad. Amen. It's time for the ministry of giving. Amen. This is an opportunity for us to be a blessing to the work of God and to one another. Um, as we lift up um, our sacrifices to the Lord, 
And when we do that, as everything else, we are trusting in God. We're trusting God. And that's what we do when we give. When we're giving to others, we're trusting that God can be trusted in his word. We can take it for what it is. Uh, listen, I don't, I don't have to get up here and promise you no house and no car and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I don't do all of that. Amen. I just believe that we ought to just believe God. Amen. If we are believers and we are saints of God and we want to grow in being disciples of Jesus Christ, then that means that we're going to seek to obey God in everything that he tells us to do. And so I don't believe as believers, somebody has to get up and force us or or edge us on to give and to praise God. Um, I think something is wrong when you have to do that kind of stuff. Amen. Something is wrong when a preacher or somebody, the praise team has to get folks to come on and praise God. Come on and clap your hands and all of this kind of stuff. No, all, all I think all it takes is for you to just look over your life and just think about God's goodness to you. And what God has done for you, I believe that when you begin to think, you'll begin to thank. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Amen. When you begin to think of God's blessings and his love, my God, the appropriate response is to give back to him. And I tell you all the time, we give to God through our tithe and offering. That's our uh, treasure. But we give to him through our giftings, our talents. And we give to him through our time. Am I right? We give to God in all of these three different ways. And so I'm, I'm asking and believing that every member of Miracle Temple will be involved. Amen. In one or all of these ways through your time. You're here today. That's your time. Amen. Your treasure, your financial contribution, but also through your gifting, working in a ministry, being involved in the work of the Lord, seeing things go forward. Amen. That's how we give. So let us all stand on today. Amen. God bless every single one of you. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. Maybe this is not your Sunday to tithe and maybe you want to just plant a offering um, on today. Please do that. If you feel so led, um, let the Lord, let the Holy Spirit lead you on what to give. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit lead you on today. Amen. As I always say, if you are a visitor, you are not uh, required. It is not mandatory for you to give in the offering. Amen. You, you do not have to give in the offering. We want you to enjoy the worship service and experience and, and enjoy the word of God and just be a part of us. Amen. But if you feel compelled to give, please feel free to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now for all of your blessings. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, your anointing and your presence that is in this house. God, we thank you for all of these, your people. Thank you, Father, because you heal our bodies. Thank you because you forgive our sins. Thank you, oh God, because you look upon us, oh God, through the lens of your son, Jesus Christ. And God, it is all grace. It is abundant grace. And God, I thank you because you are the provider of our needs. Lord, someone come into this house today. And they say, I don't have anything to give right now. But God, we believe that you are going to bless. We believe, God, that you are going to overflow us with abundant love and mercy and grace. And God, we thank you right now, Father, for all of the blessings that you will give to us and to your house on today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you. You may come giving. And you also can give through Givelify, Cash App, Zelle, amen. We have all of those various ways. Our ushers will lead you out from the rear.
selection amen by our first lady and then i'll be back to bring the word of god on today praise the lord everyone praise the lord everyone praise the lord how many of you are grateful is anybody grateful for all the things that God has done for us in our lives? Hallelujah. Can I get just a little bit more volume on this mic? Just a little bit more volume. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go. Thank you. for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we've won. I could go on and on and on about your Listen to it one more time. 
the things that you have done. And yes, I'm grateful for the big stories we've won.
on my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness. Come on, everybody, just give God some praise right now. If you're grateful, come on, if you're really grateful, come on, put your hands together, open up your mouth, and just give God the praise, give Him the glory, thank Him, come on, come on, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, come on, worship Him, Lord, I love you, I'm grateful for what you've done, grateful for what you've done in my life, I'm grateful for how you picked me up. I'm grateful for how you have led me. I'm grateful for your anointing. I'm grateful for your mercy. I'm grateful for your power. Grateful for the touch on my life. Come on, I need a church to give him some praise right now. I need a church to give him praise. Come on, I need a church to give him worship. Hallelujah. Oh my God, hallelujah. My God, I wish you would just look over at someone. You don't have to touch anybody, but just look at them and just tell them, I have something to be grateful for. Come on, would you tell them, I have something to be grateful for. Now, I can't tell you everything I'm grateful for, but I do know that I got a testimony of God's goodness. I have a testimony God's blessing. I have a testimony of how good God has been to me. Now come on and just give him a great big praise right now. Come on, give him a great praise. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, hey, hey. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless his name. I'm grateful. Hallelujah. And dear Heavenly Father, I thank you right now, Lord, for your spirit that is in this place. Thank you for your presence and your power. Lord, we praise you because we are grateful, God, for all of your blessings that have overflowed in our lives. God, thank you, God, for bringing us into this place, into this sacred and holy place. God, that we might praise and worship your name. God, that we would hear the word of God. Lord, I'm praying right now, Lord, that every person in this place would be receptive to the words that you would speak to us. God, and that you would touch us. Oh, God, that we might be rooted and grounded in the truth. And that we would know, oh, God, what your plan and will is for our lives. God, I pray right now. Even for those who are watching via Zoom, those who will watch later on through our telecast, those who will watch on YouTube or social media, God, that you would allow, God, the anointing and the presence of God that rests in this place to rest in their home and to rest on their life right now in Jesus' name. I pray, amen and amen. God bless you. Would you turn with me? very quickly to the book of Galatians. We are still in our journey through this book. Um, and it has been my goal and my desire that the writing of the Apostle Paul um, and with the grand theology that he lays out from the Holy Spirit um, in this book would make it make its home in our church and in our lives on today. This series I have entitled uh, Back to the Gospel. Not necessarily that we have lost the gospel or that we have forgotten the gospel, but sometimes we need to reiterate why we are here and why we exist in the first place. And I believe the best way for us to do that is to go back to the understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're looking at chapter five. We're almost through the book. Almost through the book. Looking at chapter five, verse two, to the end of the uh, 
um, pericope here, which is verse 15. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 2 to verse 15. And this is the Apostle Paul. He says, look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ. You who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. Verse five, for through the spirit by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view. And the one who is troubling you will bear the penalty, whoever he is. But if I, brothers, still preach circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense is of the cross has been removed. Verse 12. I wish those who unsettle you would emasculate themselves. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. The word of the Lord is blessed. Thank God for his word. For the next few moments, I wanna to talk to you from this question. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? God bless you. You may be seated. Once there was a story that was told, and the author of the story um, is unknown to me. But there was a story one day about the truth and the lie. The truth and the lie went out swimming together. And the lie got out of the water and decided that he was going to put on the truth's clothes and go to town. And the truth got out of the water and decided, well, before I go to town wearing a lie, I'll go to town naked. And here you have the naked truth. Truth. It was once said in the movie that it's something that couldn't be handled. When you think about the truth, you have many definitions of what truth is. And we live in a day where our society and our culture has in many ways taken truth and they have made it relative. In other words, they have taken truth and they have spun what the definition of truth is in order to fit or justify their own perspective and view. I've talked about this at length in the past, but one definition of this word truth could be a fact, something that can be taken with evidence and it is completely factual. It is true. But truth can also be defined as Something that is in alignment with reality. Right now, it is true 
that we are all sitting in church. That is true. Now, that truth is subjective to a degree. In other words, it has some bearing on your personal opinion. My personal opinion right now is that I am in church. I'm at church right now. But there's also an objective reality to that statement because it's true for anybody else outside of this place. For them that right now all of us together are at church. We are at church and that's true for us and for anybody else. But one of the things that the Apostle Paul brings to this church in Galatia is that now something has persuaded you away from the truth. He says, I have confidence in God that you will take no other view. Remember when we were in chapter one, Paul says to them um, outright, he says, I am astonished that you would leave the truth of the gospel for a false gospel. I'm shocked. Now, Paul, if you read this letter, you'll see his tone is extremely uh, 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 astonished and he is shocked that these people that he has spent time with, that he has put poured into and put the gospel into them have now been persuaded to leave the truth and the reality of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to move away from the truth that Jesus Christ has paid the price, that Jesus Christ has died for sin, and now you no longer are under the bondage of the law. I cannot say enough to us, Miracle Temple, how important it is for us to get this. For us to really get the reality of what the apostle through the Holy Spirit is saying, not just to the Galatian believers, but what he is also saying to us right now. If you want to build a successful life, if you want to be a true grounded disciple of Jesus Christ, if you want to be a growing person in Christ, how you start is important. How you begin is important. Is it okay if I talk to us today? Doctrine or that word uh, in its translation is teaching. Teaching today is typically discarded and it is often seen as outdated. It is antiquated and you don't need it. But can I give you something on today? Can I tell you something? Everything in everybody has doctrine. Everybody has a belief system. That belief system creates for that person a worldview and how they see the world, how they interact in the world, how they live in the world. And believe it or not, although you might have those in politics who say that the church of Jesus Christ or Christians should not try to force their ideology and their doctrine on the country, and try to force everybody in the country to live by Christian standards, believe it or not, those who are not Christian are also forcing and pushing some kind of doctrine. Hello, somebody. They are pushing some kind of teaching on you to cause you to believe what they believe. And if you don't believe like they believe, they will say you are intolerant. But the moment you say, well, I disagree with your point, then you see how intolerant they become. Hello, somebody. But Paul says, if you are accepting circumcision, now watch what he says here, because he wants you to understand something here in verse six. It may sound like a contradiction when you read it, 
and when you look at what he says throughout his New Testament epistles, it looks like he's saying you may as well, you can go ahead and get circumcised. Look at what he says. He says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything but only faith working through love. What is he saying? In other words, it's not about whether you get circumcised or if you do not get circumcised. What he's trying to show you is, is that when you are getting circumcised in order to gain a right relationship with God, that's when you are outside of God's grace. Hello, somebody. That's when you have stepped outside of what God has predetermined for your life. When you seek other things to give you salvation. The only thing and only one that can give us salvation is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, what he calls us to is faith working through love. Now, verse four, he says it again. He says, you who would be justified by the law. In other words, the person who is seeking to have this right relationship with God through what you do, you have already missed the whole purpose of the gospel. Look at verse two. He says, if you're looking for circumcision for your salvation, Christ is will be of no advantage to you. In other words, you do not recognize the benefits of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. The message translation says it like this. It says, the person who accepts the way of circumcision trades all the advantages of the free life in Jesus Christ for the obligations of the slave life of the law. Hebrews 4 and 2 says, for good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listen. This is a part of what happens when we lose focus of the gospel of Jesus Christ and what God has provided to us through his son. Romans chapter 10 verses 2 and 3. He says, for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, for being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. And listen, this is what's happening right now. This is what's happening. Any people who are not submitting their life to the righteousness of God. What does that mean? They're not submitting to what God has already done through Jesus Christ. And they are working hard in order to obtain God's blessing. They're working hard to obtain the power of God in their lives. When you understand and when you grasp The reality that your relationship with God is not based on what you do. Do you know that that will transform how you live? That will change how you interact with other people. How? James says faith without works is dead. Now, it was the uh, Protestant uh, Reformation leader, Martin Luther, who did not agree with James. He read James and he went and tore it out of his Bible, someone said. Because he thought that James was saying something contrary to what Paul was teaching. However, later on he found out that James was just saying the very opposite. James was saying, because you have faith, this faith works itself out in good works. It's not the good works that save you, but because you are saved, now you do good works. And the good works reveal the truth and the reality that you have given your life to Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? But notice in verse three, he says, 
Those who seek to have circumcision as their way of salvation, they are obligated to keep the whole law. Romans 2 and 25, he says, Paul says the same things to the Romans. He says, for circumcision indeed is of value if you obey the law. But if you break the law, your circumcision becomes uncircumcision. And later on in verse 29, he says, but a Jew is one inwardly. And circumcision is a matter of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. What is he saying? In other words, when you are working, you already have your praise. You remember what Jesus said to the Pharisees? He said, those who go to pray, those who give alms, those who fast, in order to be seen by other people, have already received their reward. When you do good things, prayer is a good thing. Fasting is a good thing. Reading your Bible is a good thing. But when you get into the habit of doing these things so other people can see you, you have already gotten your reward. And your reward is the hand clap and the accolades of people. But when you are doing it for God, you're doing it because you want God to be pleased with you and you want to gain the spiritual benefits of having this relationship with God, God says he will reward you openly. Somebody shout hallelujah. But James says the same thing in James chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. He says, for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point becomes guilty of all of it. This is the thing about the law, people of God. This is why you cannot seek salvation through it. Although, Paul says, the law shows us that we are sinners. The law is the sum total of the perfection and the holiness of God. We cannot fathom in our minds how holy God really is. When we think about this idea that God is 100% pure, he is clean, he is holy, and he cannot look upon any wickedness with approval. It's like in the Sunday school lesson, that person who gets comfortable in their sin. That person, when God's judgment begins to come, they look at God and say, you're the evil one. <laughs> it's not me that has done the evil. It's not me who is wrong, but God, it's you that's wrong. It's you who are evil. You have done the wrong thing. Do you realize that when you are seeking salvation through the law, you are required to keep all of it? James gives an example. He says, for he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you murder, he says, you have become a transgressor of the law. So in other words, you cannot get away. You are guilty before God. And someone might say, but, and I've had one person say to me once before, but preacher, I have not done anything. I have not done anything wrong. I, I never did this. I never did that. They go down the line and they say, I've not done this, that, or the other. It's just like that rich young ruler that Jesus stopped and spoke to in the Gospels. This rich young man, he says, I've kept all of the law since I was a child. I've done it all. I've never lied. I've never committed adultery. I've never done this. I've never done that. He goes down the line and Jesus says to him, OK, but you haven't done this. You haven't done that. But. I dare you to go and take everything that you have and sell it. And the young man turned away from Jesus and walked away and he was sad. Because he found out that although he had done everything right 
and he had all of this stuff under his belt. He was a good person, according to modern standards. According to the world today, they would say, that's a great man. That's a good man. But he had a problem with greed. Do you see that? The first commandment, don't put nobody else before God. Nothing goes before him. But yet, he did put something before God. He put his money before God. And let me tell you something. We are not far removed from that rich young ruler. Many today think because they have done good on this and that. I go to church. I pay my tithes. I do all of this good stuff. I work in the church. And you think because you do all of these good things that at the end, God is going to applaud you. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says that it's our reasonable service. God does not owe me anything because I've done some good things or I've made some good decisions or I followed the law. But James says, you may not have committed adultery, but you murdered. And if you did just that one thing, you broke all of the law. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And now you are severed from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. Because now you have been called. This is why Paul says you were called by God. You were called to be under the grace of Jesus Christ. I believe in my heart that somebody through this is going to be set free. Because there are so many people who are trying to build their life on sand. Trying to build their life on places that will not keep them rooted and grounded. And I can show you when you know you are not building your life and your spiritual life on good ground. When trouble comes, When trials come and when times of testing come into your life, that is going to tell off on where you really are in your life. It's not somebody will say, well, oh, I got shaky. I got fearful. Do you understand that getting fearful is a natural response to stimuli? Whether external or internal, fear is a natural response. In fact, science tells us that the human body has an automatic response mechanism. When there is some kind of stressful event, some kind of problem that you automatically into this fight or flight mode. It's your body's way of helping to keep you safe helping to keep you out of harm's way. It's like a fire. That fire comes. Your body automatically jumps into this panic when it sees the fire. It it, it, it smells smoke. You automatically run out the house. Now, in those movies, some folk, they run in the house. But no, you don't want to run in the house. You run out the house. Hello, somebody. But that's a natural part of how God created us as human beings to have that automatic response. However, what you do know is when your faith is weak to the point that the trouble comes and you don't believe. Or you are saying, I don't know if I can really trust God in this. I don't know if I can really believe that God is going to work this thing out in my life and that he's going to intervene in this problem. That is one clear indication of where you really are. When trouble comes, what is your faith response? Hello, somebody. 
What is your response in God? Is your response one of complete fear and unbelief that God cannot handle what has just arrived in your life? Or is this the understanding that this is just a temporary trouble that has come into my life in order to cause me to trust God the more? Who I'm asking you today, who has hindered you from obeying the truth? What has caused you to shrink away from believing in God? What has caused you to look at your problem and say this problem is bigger than my God? What has come into your life? And I'm talking to us here today that says, I don't know what I'm going to do and I don't think anything can be done about it. So I'm going to figure it out myself. We talked about that on last Sunday about Abraham. When God gave him a promise, he listened to his wife and he had a child with Hagar. Ishmael was not the promise of God. That was not what God wanted to do in his life. God wanted to take this opportunity of utter impossibility. And God wanted to show himself mighty and strong. I wish you would just take a moment to look around in your life and see what's impossible in my life. Listen, I'm looking around as a pastor and I say, my God, this needs to happen. That needs to happen. But God keeps reminding me, all you got to do is trust me. All you got to do is believe me, because if you trust me and give me an opportunity in the impossibility, I will cause the impossible to happen. Don't you realize that God wants to take your impossible situation right now and he wants to get so involved in that impossible situation that he turns that thing around and works it out for your good and he will get the glory. Hallelujah. You've fallen away from grace. Second Peter 3, 17 through 18, he says, you therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of the lawless and lose your own stability. I am concerned for the people of God. I have a very deep concern that is pressing in on me every day for God's church. And I'm not just talking about Miracle Temple, but I'm talking about the worldwide universal church that we are losing our stability because we are walking away from the truth that salvation comes through Jesus Christ. I am concerned that people today are building their life on quicksand. And they are seeking to be sanctified. Y'all remember that word? That word sanctified means growing in God, becoming more like Jesus Christ. I'm concerned that people are trying to become more like Jesus Christ by following a long list of do's and don'ts. And seeing this list of do's and don'ts as a thing that brings salvation to them. Remember what I just told you from James? It's not the list of do's and don'ts that saves you, but it is an indication that you're saved. So when you're doing the good works, you're doing good deeds, you're helping people, you're doing what's right. That is an indication that God's love is in your heart. Somebody shout hallelujah. But remember this, remember this, that believers, we're not trying to produce perfect righteousness by our own efforts because the hope is not in us. The power is not in us, but we are waiting for God, waiting for God to complete this work of righteousness in us. Do you remember what 
James said, I believe it's chapter six, he talks about prayer. And he says that the effectual and fervent prayer of who? The righteous avails much. But have you ever taken the minute to think about the righteous? Have you ever taken a moment to consider that righteousness does not come through yourself? But this righteousness that he's talking about must and have to come through Jesus Christ? It's not because I am righteous. It's because he is righteous. And now when I place my faith and my hope in him, he makes me righteous. So now when I pray, I'm not looking for the answer to come because I've done something good. Y'all just looking at me today. But it's because he is righteous. It's because he has made me right in his sight. Now I can stand stable. Now I can be settled. Now I can be strong. I can stand on my own two feet in the presence of God and I can come boldly before his throne of grace to obtain mercy and help in time of need. I pray the day that somebody's getting what I'm talking about. I pray that you are understanding that even your prayer life does not hinge on because you prayed for two hours. It does not hinge on because you were so mighty. And many times now, people who call themselves prayer warriors, they are only calling themselves that many times, not all the time, but sometimes because they want people to see them as spiritually strong. They want people to see them as powerful. But the, can I tell you something? Just because you pray for long periods don't mean nothing. It don't mean that you any greater than the next person sitting next to you. No, what prayer is, is something that happens in private. It's something that says, no, I'm depending on God. I'm trusting in God. And so because I'm trusting God, I'm praying. I'm seeking his face. I, I, I'm, I'm listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I, I'm looking for God to do something in my life and to transform my mind and to change my heart. See, today I'm preaching because I want you to grow. Hello, somebody. I know we get excited. We run and we dance and we're going to do that. But I need people to grow. What good is it to have a church full of people, a church that's packed out and people are weak in their faith? What good is it to have a church of people and folks are still depending on the flesh? My God. No, what we need is a church that is controlled by the Holy Spirit. A church that's in the word of God because you're not going to fix anything in your life without God's word. When Jesus was being tempted by the devil, Jesus didn't come with his own philosophy. He came with the word of God. Hello, somebody. He came and he said, no, Satan, it is written. He got the word of God on the enemy, even in the seen as this man of God with a sword coming out of his mouth. Can you see that sword in his mouth that's coming out, which is the word of God? And Paul says in Ephesians that you take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I wonder on today if there was a spiritual magnifying glass that was covering this entire congregation, would your mouth be full of the word? I wonder, would your tongue be like Jesus's? Or would your tongue show something else? Oh my God. Hopefully it's a sharp sword. That's full and equipped with God's word. But listen at what he says in verse six. He says that living by faith is the call. I'm almost done. Living by faith, which is working through love. 
this is really the sum total of the law. Living by faith through love. Everybody say that. Living. No, y'all follow me. Follow me. Living by faith through love. Yes. That's what Paul is saying matters the most. Circumcision or uncircumcision is not it. You can or you don't have to. It doesn't matter. Now, Paul talks about this somewhere else. He's not saying that you don't get circumcised at all. It's what I said earlier. It's about seeing the circumcision as the thing that saves you. That's what he wants you to get out of your mind. He wants you to see that the salvation comes through Jesus Christ. But this is faith working through love. First Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verses one through three, Paul says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. Verse two, he says, and if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, notice what he said there. If I have all faith, now he said faith working through love, but if I have all faith so as to move, move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have and deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. So the question becomes, if it's faith working through love, what is love? What is love? Now, today in our modern world, they say love is accepting people for what they want to do and how they want to do it. If a person decides they want to live an alternate lifestyle, that's fine. That's what's good for them. And I would challenge that thinking. I would highly contend that that is not a good way to build your life. That's not a valid way to build your spiritual reality. Now, what is love? Now, he continues and he tells you before what it is, he tells you what love is not. He said, it's not envy. It's not boasting. It's not arrogance. It's not rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable. Love is not resentful and it does not rejoice at wrongdoing. If you want to know what love is not, now this is, now let me say this to you. Now when you, when someone comes to you and they have made a decision that they want to live an alternate lifestyle, they want to do their own thing and they don't want to, let's say, follow what the Bible teaches about how you ought to live your life. Now, you're not going to win the person by saying, how dare you? Look at you deciding you're going to live outside of God's word. No, the Bible says this is how you ought to live and this is how you ought to do. I can tell you just from what I just said, if you are operating in any of these things, you are not showing love to that person. Now, it's not accepting the person's lifestyle, and that could be anything. Maybe the person is an atheist, for an example. Loving that person who has decided to be an atheist means you're not envious. It means you are not boasting. In other words, you're humble. You're not arrogant. You're not being rude. You're not insisting on your own way. So that might mean you're going to take the time, be quiet, and you'll listen to them. Hello, someone. You'll listen to what they have to say before you have a retort or sometime while people are talking to us, we're thinking in our minds how we can come back and defend our own position. But listening, I mean, real effective listening is saying, I'm not going to think about what I'm going to say back. I'm just going to listen in on what this person is saying to me. So I'm not insisting on my own way. I'm not being irritable, resentful, and I'm not going to rejoice at wrongdoing. 
So if this person has decided they wanted to live another life, I'm not going to applaud it. Hello, am I right? I'm not going to get excited and say, oh, they decided they're going to live this life. And you know that goes against your own values. You're not rejoicing. You have a godly sorrow, a godly sadness, and you put that person on your prayer list. (laughs) You put that person on your prayer list. I would encourage every person in Miracle Temple, start developing your prayer life. Get you a notebook and start writing people's names down and what it is that they are asking for you to pray for and commit to praying. Because sometimes we say, oh, I'm going to pray for you. And you don't. You forget. And it's just a human error. You just forget. Sometimes you're just busy. You're going on about your life, doing what you have to do. And you forget the person asked for prayer. It happens. But begin to commit to it. Put it on paper. Write the person's name down. Are we helping somebody today? But then he says, what love is? What is it? I'm almost done here. Patience. Love is kind. Love, uh uh-oh, bears all things. (laughs) Now, somebody might say, well, you you don't know where I come from. And you don't know what I can do. I can give them a piece of my mind. Somebody said one time, you better be careful giving everybody a piece of your mind. Because you're going to need that piece and all the other pieces. Don't, don't, don't get too used to saying, well, this is how I was raised. Just because you were raised to be mean don't mean you ought to be, continue to be mean. Just because you, you did it this way and did it that way don't mean you got to continue to do it your way. Hello, somebody. Sometimes you ought to be able to listen to somebody else and say, well, maybe they got a point. I can do it that way. Oh, God, help me. Bears all things. But then he says, believes all things. That means you live your life in faith. There is nothing impossible. I told somebody the other day what I'm believing God to do. And they looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, I got faith. I believe God. I believe that God can do anything. I don't think there's anything too hard for God. If we say we're Christians and we believe in a God that's bigger than the world itself, who am I to say what God can't do? Who am I to limit God? Some of y'all need to start taking the limits off of God. And y'all need to let God be big in your life. Let God do something great. My God. He says hopes all things endures all things and then instead of rejoicing at wrongdoing Paul says love rejoices with the truth you see that it rejoices with the truth he says the truth of the gospel is the thing that these believers have walked away from they 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 have shrunk away from the truth of the word of God they, they, they've moved away from what God has called them to do and into a place that he has not called them. So now, because they are moving away from the truth, now really they're rejoicing at wrongdoing. Oh, God. But listen, and, 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 and I'm going to wrap this up. We, 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 we're going to the Lord's table today. Verses 13 through 15, Paul, Paul gives some more application to what he's talking about. He, he gives more application. He, he said that when you really love, when, when you truly love, you serve others. Remember, I told you, church, that our mission is to love God. I, I, I need to get that on, on, on a wall somewhere around here because I want everybody to be reminded about what it is God has called us to do. We love God. God. We love people. We love one another. And that's just not me, my foe, and no more. Just us right here in Miracle Temple. No, we, we got to get out of that. Oh, God. We, we, we have to get out of just us. We, we have to start loving everybody. 
He says, the law is fulfilled in one word. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you really want to be a Christian, you really want to live according to the standard of God, then you are seeking to live this word. Loving your neighbor as yourself. You see, because I love myself, because I want good for me, I certainly want it for somebody else. Hello, someone. When you love your neighbor as yourself, you will not covet their spouse or their possessions. The, the law, the Ten Commandments says what? Thou shalt not covet. Well, if you love your neighbor, then you're not going to covet what they have. You see how that works? Paul is trying to get us to understand this is what the Holy Spirit wants for us. He wants to get us away from seeing our salvation through following these things, but understanding now that because you love God and you love people, now you find yourself obeying the law. You find yourself doing what the law has already required. I, I, I'm not going to lie to my neighbor because I don't want nobody lying to me. I'm not going to bear false witness against my neighbor. I'm not going to steal from them because that's not love. If I steal from my neighbor, I don't really love them. <laughs> but notice what he says. He says, you were called to freedom. We talked about that last week. But you do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. You do not use the freedom that you have in Jesus Christ. God says, okay, you don't steal, you don't covet, you don't do this. You don't use that freedom knowing that these are the things that don't save you to go and just indulge yourself and just do what you want to do. No, you, you don't indulge yourself. You, you don't serve yourself. Now you're serving others. Because, see, sin is grounded in selfishness. It's all about self. Sin, sin serves the self and not others. But God calls us to serve others in love. And when you love, you're not being boastful. You're not being arrogant. You're not being rude. You're not insisting on your own way. You're not irritable. You're not being resentful. You're not rejoicing at wrongdoing. You're doing the opposite of those things. This is love. And this is how we live out the law. Faith working through love. So today, who hindered you? Who, who's hindering you? Not even who. I just heard the Holy Spirit said, what? What is hindering you from obeying the truth today? What's keeping you back from growing in your life with God? What is keeping you from having that joy that David, the psalmist, when he sinned with Bathsheba, he prayed and asked God, restore the joy of my salvation. Give me my joy back. Many today, you might not have joy in your life. I mean, real joy. You see, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness comes with circumstances. When the circumstances and everything is going good in your life, you're happy. But you see, joy goes beyond what's happening moment by moment. Joy is something that is resident within you. It's there because it's outside of you. <laughs> Joy is not produced in your life because of you. It's produced by God's spirit living in you. So if you want to really be that person who is living by faith, working through love, I dare you to give yourself to God. Turn away from those things that are telling you, leave the truth, leave the church. That's not where you need to be. You got to fight that devil. He's a liar. And because he's a liar, 
He wants to constantly help you build your life on a bunch of lies. He, he wants you to build your spiritual life on lies that you have to be perfect. You have to do it this way. You have to be that way. You have to go that way. He wants you to build your life on that so that you really don't get the advantage. Because remember, Paul said, Christ is no, ad- of ad- no advantage to you if you're seeking circumcision. So he wants to take the advantage and the benefit from you. I'd have to preach at another time what the advantages are, but I can tell you this, he forgives your sins. I can tell you that he, he loves you. I, I can tell you that. And he wants you to really know it. Stand to your feet. Let me say this to you, saints. Verses 7 to 12, one of my favorite commentators, John Stott, he talks about when Paul talks about the Christian life, he likens the Christian life to a race. Paul does that very often in his epistles. He talks about the Christian life being a race. Other places you see it, it's, it's, it's referred to as a walk. These are just metaphors to help you understand what he's trying to get you to see. But John Stott calls that person who is obeying the truth. This person who is walking with God, he sees that person as an integrated Christian. That's what he calls them. Listen to what he says, and we're going to pray. He says, notice that to run well in the Christian race is not just to believe the truth as if Christianity were nothing but orthodoxy, nor, listen to this, just to behave well, as if Christianity were just moral uprightness, but to obey the truth, applying belief to behavior is really what Christianity is about. Only he who obeys the truth is an integrated Christian. What he believes and how he behaves are all one piece. His creed is expressed in his conduct and his conduct is derived by his creed. Today, my prayer is that our church would be filled with integrated Christians. That every believer would get away from the lies, the false doctrine, get in the word and not just read it, not just believe it, but let your belief in God's word translate into doing. And as you do that, you will begin to be. Y'all hear me? You will be the person God wants you to be. Being and doing. That's another sermon. I'm getting a whole lot of sermons up here today, Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. But the song says, Jesus, just paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he washed it white. As snow. Come on, would you help me sing it? Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Hallelujah. Sin has left. <laughs> 
a crimson stain but he he wants it white as snow dear heavenly father god we thank you right now lord we have gone to every pain we could to explain the truth of your word to your people. God, we do not come with eloquent words or speech, but we come by faith through the working of your Holy Spirit. Dear God, that you would wash us, purge us, cleanse us. God, that we would walk in your ways and that we would obey you and that we would trust you. Father, I'm praying right now, Lord, if there is a person here that does not have a personal relationship with you, dear God, that you would reach into that person's world right now. By your Holy Spirit, oh God, I'm praying that you would begin to touch that person's heart, touch that person's mind, change their direction, change the path that they are on. God, you see in this world, trouble is everywhere. and This virus and this pandemic is on an uptick, but God, you're in control of it all. There's nothing that you don't know. There's nothing that you don't see. God, you are in control of everything. And God, if we can only believe like the old song says that you've got the whole world in your hand. God, I believe that we would trust you more. We would walk with you more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because, Lord, you paid it all. You paid the debt. And, God, we don't have to kill animals anymore. We don't have to take their blood and sprinkle it over doors. Because Jesus has taken the place of the Lamb. And he is the great I am. Lord, I thank you right now as we prepare to come before your table. I pray, Father, that you would forgive us of our sins. Wash us, O Lord. Cleanse us. Make us right in your sight. O God, that we would do your will. And that we would obey you. And God, we thank you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Would you all put your hands together? We're getting ready to go to the Lord's table on today. I'm going to ask if uh, Elder Prentice, if he would help me to pull the table. Praise God. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Would our deacon and sisters come?
that yeah, gives, gives me strength. strength. Come on. From day to day, it will never lose its power. Praise our God. Please continue to play that softly. What I'm going to ask first, I'm going to ask if our ushers would prepare the bins for once we have concluded so that we can make sure that all of the containers have been discarded properly. Amen. If they were prepared to do that. And then I'm going to also ask if they would prepare to let you out from the rear. So I need a couple of ushers. I need maybe one or two that can get the bins so that they are ready. And then another two that will let you out from the rear. Amen. Oh, it's power. Yes. All right. The blood. The blood. Come on. That Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary. Come worshiping the blood. The blood that, that gives me strength. serve that desires to partake in our Lord's broken body and blood. The same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said to his disciples, this is my body which was broken for you. Let us all partake together in our Lord's body. And in the same manner, Jesus took the cup after he had supped, saying, this cup is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink from this cup and you eat this bread, you show forth my death until I come again. Let us all drink 
together. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. message and uh, then we will conclude the evening in prayer together as a church family and so we want you to just come back on Wednesday via Zoom wherever you are you can log in and you can be with us God bless you Elder Elmore is going to come and give us our closing prayer benediction God, we say thank you so much for allowing us to be in your presence. God, we thank you for our leader on today. God, we thank you for the wisdom that you've given him. Father, we ask you to be with us as we leave this place and never your presence. Make easy and successful our way. God, we thank you. We need you, God. We're dependent on you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.